diluting solutions. So a standard solution is a solution that is essentially already made up. It has a known concentration. You can order these and pay a bunch of money for them, and someone has gone about making the solution. Um, they are made by taking a certain amount of water and a certain mass of the solute, and then they put them together, and they say, okay, here's the concentration of this particular solution. Um, they could be made that way, or if they're made from another solution, you can take a original solution, you can dilute it, and then you'd end up with this, the standard solution, um, which is more dilute than the original. These can be referred to as stock solutions. So when you're working in a lab and you need a particular solution, um, if you're not making it up yourself, you can order these stock solutions and you can use that to do whatever you need to do, or you could use that to make further dilutions. So we need to be able to understand how to take an already existing solution, like a stock solution, and dilute it down to whatever concentration you want it to be. So the equipment needed to do this, a couple of things are handy for it. First one is a volumetric flask, and so these are super, well, quite precise anyways, um, containers essentially that just tell you how much stuff they're dealing with. So this one here um, measures only one liter amounts, and so it's got a single line on it, and what you do is you fill it up, and once you fill it up exactly that line, that's one liter. If you want to make, instead of one liter, you want to make, I don't know, 100 milliliters, you have to have a separate flask because there's only one measurement on these volumetric flasks. And so if you want 100 milliliters, you have to buy a separate flask, and it's going to have one single line on it, and it would be used only for making 100 milliliter amounts of any particular solution. These are what we'd be using to make our solutions and again you could use mass you could start with a solid and you could drop some solid in there and then add water to it or you could start from a, another solution and put that in there and then fill it up to the line so you, what you'd need to know is if i want a certain concentration how much stuff am i putting into this flask and then how much water um, will i need to add to get to that exact line or i'm going to top it up to that exact line with the right amount of water Volumetric pipettes are what we use to actually move solutions from one place to another that are in relatively small amounts. So if we're doing something like a titration, you'd use these volumetric pipettes. And again, you'd, you'd suck up some liquid from somewhere. And they have these ones here are like volumetric flasks. They only have one single line on them. So you need a different one for each amount. So if you want 50 mils, you'd pick up that one. If you want, um, I don't know, 10 mils, you'd pick up that one. And then what you would do is they're essentially like a straw. So you put them in the container and then you have to use either a, a bulb or a pump, um, but something that's going to be able to create suction to actually suck up that liquid and then you can move it from one place to another. A little bit more versatile, but perhaps less precise, would be a graduated pipette. Um, and they're graduated because they have multiple lines on them, so you can measure different amounts on them, unlike a volumetric pipette. They're used the exact same way. You could use a bulb or a pump to move them. Um, do not use your mouth, as may have been done in the past. Uh, these bulbs are pretty cheap. Use them instead. So to dilute a solution, you're going to need to take some amount of original solution. So if you have an original solution and you want to make a dilute version of it, you're going to have to take some of that original solution and move it over essentially to a new container. And so you'd end up with some amount. And just doing that is not going to give you a dilute, dilute solution. Then what you need to do is you need to top it up with water. You'd have to mix it together. And then you'd have a more dilute version of the original solution. So when we do the calculations for this, there are two things that we kind of need to know is the first one is how much do we move over and then that's going to depend on what volume we want to make and what concentration of the original we're dealing with so we've got these three um, variables that we we need to work with to solve how to make these dilution calculations um, and again the, the, figuring in the concentration that we want to make as well so Essentially, the first thing we need to do is, okay, let, let's work in moles. We're going to have to transfer over from one to the other a certain number of moles to end up with the concentration that we want. So, for example, let's say these were liter containers. If we wanted to make a one molar solution, one mole per liter, then obviously we'd have to move over one mole from the original container. So then the question is, in the original container, how much is that? How much makes up one mole? So we'd have to know the concentration of the original one, and we'd have to know the volume that is required to get that right number of moles over into that new container. So those are the calculations involved in doing a dilution calculation. Then, of course, if we're trying to make a liter of it, we were going to move over a certain amount, we'd have to then dilute it with the, the right amount of water 
And a volumetric flask is great for this because you'd right, add in the right amount of water, top it up to that exact amount. So these volumes can be transferred in a new container, water added, and then you get your new dilute solution. So let's try out one of these calculations. First, the long way, and then the shortcut. So if we wanted to make 100 mils of a 0 0.008 mole per liter solution, that's the new solution that we want to make. So we can think of this as being the final solution. Or another way of, of writing it is say, okay, this is going to be solution number two. This is the one we're going to be making, our second solution. We're going to be making that from our original solution, and it happens to have a concentration of 0 0.02 moles per liter as its concentration. Now, obviously, you can't make a more concentrated solution from a another solution without trying to get rid of some water and distilling it and that rapid or something like that. So these are all dilution or I was making a less concentrated solution. So the question is, if we take this original container here, so we've got this original container and it has a concentration of 0 0.020 moles per liter. I'm putting that capital M there for molarity, short form for moles per liter. And then I'm going to make a second container and there's two things that I want to have met. I want to make sure it's concentration is 0 0.0080 moles per liter. And the, the amount that I want to make, and you can make any amount you want, but the amount that we're gonna make is going to be 100 mils. And so that is how much I need to end up with. So I'd use like a 100 milliliter volumetric flask to do that. So the question then becomes, um, how much do I need to move over into the new container? And that essentially is, the number of moles. So the number of moles needed to get this new solution. And you can see that we know that um, we have our concentration equals number of moles over volume. And we have the concentration here, because this is the concentration we want. We have the volume that we want, because we decided we want to make 100 mils. And so the question is, how many moles do we need to do to get that? So we can say, okay, let's rearrange that. So the number of moles to make this new solution, this, this new concentration, this new volume, that's what we're solving for. And remember, this is our second one. So just because we have two um, containers here, we want to make sure we know which solution we're talking about. So all this concentration, volume, moles, um, this is from the second container here. Now, these moles, of course, are coming from the first container. So the moles that go into the second container are coming from the first container. So we, we know the concentration of the first container and we could solve for the number of moles because whatever moles are going into the second container are coming from the first container. So we now have that variable as well because we can get that from the concentration of volume that we want to make in our second container. The number of moles that are being moved from the into the second container are the same number of moles, they have to be the same number of moles that are coming from the first container. So essentially, we can find out what that would be. And this works out to be, if we use our conversion factors, we want to make 100 mils, we can cancel that out to get to liters, cancel liters out using the concentration. We need 0 0.00080 moles to be moved over. And of course, they have to come from the first container. The question is, what volume is it going to take to get that many moles? Because we've got to scoop up and you'd use a volumetric pipette or a graduate pipette to suck up that amount of stuff and you can't count it, right? So you have to measure it in volume. So we need to solve now for the volume that is required to be picked up out of the first container to move over to the second container to make sure that we have that right number of moles. So if we need these um, 0 0.0, I missed a zero there, 0 0.000, 0 eight zero moles um, to come out of the first container. Let's see if I did the math here, right? Okay, good, there's the zero. Um, we can find out the volume. And again, we set up a conversion factor using the concentration of the original solution. And then let's put it in milliliters so it's a little bit easier to talk about. So moles are canceled out, liters are gonna cancel out, and now we'll be in milliliters. So the amount that needs to be moved from one to the other is 0 0.0080 moles. Of course, you can't pick those up or anything like that. So we have to suck them up as liquid, which in case we need to know the volume that would contain that many moles. So we have to move 40 milliliters over in order to get our new concentration. Now, of course, all we do, so imagine, let's clean this up a bit. Imagine we move over into our container here, the 40 milliliters. 
we wanted to make 100 mils. That, that was our original goal here. We want to make 100 mils, and we just moved 40 over. So that really hasn't done anything. So what we then have to do is we have to then add water, and then we stir it up. And if we added 40 mils and we want to make a final solution of 100 mils, we'd have to top it up with 60 milliliters of water. That would give us our 100 mil solution that we were trying to make from the beginning. And of course, since it has the number of moles of 0 0.0080 moles and its volume is now 100 milliliters, it will have the correct concentration 0 0.0080 moles per liter that we were going for in the beginning. Now the shortcut for this, if you look at those equations, we're, we've got two concentration equations and the number of moles are equal to each other. So we, we again have our original concentration equation, we can arrange it to set to solve for a number of moles. And since we're making this dilution, the moles taken out of the original container are moved to the moles. So we got this original container and we are going to move these moles into this new container. So the moles are going to be equal to each other. Whatever moles we're, we're, we need in the new container are coming from the old container. That's how we're setting up the math to do it. So of course, we have two concentration equations that we can now set equal to each other. We just have the concentration equation for, let's say this was our new container here. And again, the same equation would apply to the original container. So we have a variable that we know is equal to each other. So we can set these two equations equal to each other. And this gives us our dilution equation. Anytime we're doing a dilution, as long as there's nothing else going on, um, we can use this as a shortcut. We can find any one of these four variables as long as we have the other three. So if we are looking for the volume of stuff that needs to be moved from one container to the other, as long as you know the concentration of the volume you want to make and the concentration of the original solution, you can solve for that volume. So let's try that the shortcut way. Same question using this equation. And of course, we have this new container that we want to make. This is our second solution. We know the concentration of our original solution. So then we just need to rearrange the equation for V1, plug them in, and we have our answer. And again, moles per liters are going to cancel out. And so the way this is set up, we're going to have to end up with our units in liters. And of course, we end up with 0 0.040 liters, which is the same answer we got before. Um, by using the dilution equation, we're setting those moles equal to each other, and we're able to jump very quickly to the answer. Of course, 40 milliliters is what gets moved over. You have to add 60 mils of water. Otherwise, you just have a portion of the original solution. Once you add the water, the right amount to get to the set volume that we were trying to get to in the beginning, then you have your dilute solution. All right, let's try this one out here. We've got 50 mils of a 2.5 mole per liter, because remember this is moles per liter, um, solution of sodium chloride, and we're going to dilute it to one liter. So this is going to be our second volume. This is what, this is what we're going to be creating, and we want to know what's its concentration going to be. So this is going to be the, the new concentration. This is our original volume. We started with 50 mils, and this is our original concentration. So we can set up our dilution equation, and we know that the moles will be the same between the beginning and the end. What's going to be changing is going to be the concentrations and the volumes. We're getting a new volume, so of course that would have a new concentration to it. Rearrange for that new concentration, plug in our numbers, and again, um, we have liters cancelling out here, which is good because we'll end in moles per liter, which is what the question is looking for. So we know we've rearranged the equation correctly, and the new concentration is going to be 0 0.125 moles per liter. So let's try this with a volume. So what volume in milliliters of a 0.5 mole per liter, molar molarity, solution of hydrochloric acid will it take to make 100 mils of a 0.1 mole solution? So this is our new volume. This is our new concentration. And this is the original, new I should say, two, our second one. And this is the original concentration. See, all right, let's write it as a subscript, C1. Um, and so again, we've got our three variables. We've got 
the one we're looking for. We've got our equation. We rearrange it for our volume that is needed to be moved from the original out. And so our original volume, uh, the volume of the original solution, plug in our numbers. And again, we don't have to write moles per liter. It's a little shorter writing capital M. They're going to cancel out. You could convert to liters if you want, but if you don't, it just means that that liters, because they're not going to cancel out, they're just going to get carried through to the bottom, and that will be our answer. So it's going to require 20 mils of that original solution to be moved over. And of course, if we're making 100 mils, you can't just put them in the container. You've got to add 80 mils of water as well.